Oof, I left this place a mess. Good morning, everybody. It is way early. It's before 7. Should be sleeping right now, but I had a migraine. Still sort of do. But taking the Excedrin kind of ruins being able to sleep because of all the caffeine in it. But I'll take being awake over all of the pain. But happy Father's Day to everybody out there. It is an absolute honor and wonderful being a father. Stressful. I'm bald and gray because of it, but I'm proud of it. <laughs> um, I'm going to be spending my morning with my best friend, Chet, who is also a father, and my father, who is also my best friend. My best friends. So, spending my morning with the people I love and care about. Um, so, today is kind of cool. I'm doing this video because of a big change for some of something that I've done. Turn some light on. So, after I redid Doom and turned Doom into an 85 millimeter monster. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I've been contemplating switching over Pearl. And the only parts that I can show you left of Pearl is the top plate. I got this from Tomo Quads a very, very long time ago. Well over, we'll say seven years, maybe even more. Um, keep contemplating changing this is the other piece and this is why this was I believe still if you want to call it a cinema whoop even though it didn't have ducks it was a duckless style cinema whoop which is everything's changing over to now 75 millimeter and 40 millimeter props and I had the oop, insta go on it and it was a fun flyer. It was really locked in and great, but it had a very Cadillac feel to it because of the amount of weight added because of the battery and the Insta. And you were limited to how much thrust and stuff you could use because you were running the 40 millimeter props. This thing could fit anywhere and made some incredible shots and I loved it. But the frame broke. It probably was broken for a while and when I was debating on re and changing and moving some stuff around, which would have been the second time in this month, that I've messed with it. The frame, I noticed, was cracked right here, and when I pulled the VTX off, it just shattered. So, it was my sign that my project idea that I wanted to do to it was, like, a, a good idea. Like, so, based on kind of... What the fuck did I just drop? Oh, man. Based on the 85 millimeter. Oh, check out the cool tattoos. I got new tattoos. Hello, kitty. What's up? My kid got some. Found some temporary tattoos that have been sitting in the basement, sealed away in one of those type of containers. So, myself, Chet, and my wife all now have cool tattoos. So I'm gonna rock them at the range. Anyway, <laughs> because of the awesome flight characteristics and efficiency that I'm finding with this 85 millimeter frame, I wanted to take Pearl to the next level and make it completely custom. So what we have here is one heck of, this was a all morning, really kick-ass custom project. And it was kind of, it was like a Kaizen, if anybody knows what that means. Where you kind of go in and study things and change things and work as you go and, and see what works and what doesn't and build upon that. So I knew I wanted to make a pusher. I love the profile of the pusher. I like the flight characteristics. I feel that they're a little different. I think it's a little more efficient in my opinion. And I could kind of, one of the problems with Pearl was the fact that the camera was all the way in the front. So you had to push the battery all the way in the back. So it was fighting the balance, the CG, and having all the power wires and stuff right next to the VTX. So that was the first struggle. Well, obviously there was a few struggles to this as in, um, getting everything to fit into a completely different style setup with, I, I would call it less room. So I retained the flight controller orientation where it's still, the, the pins for the motors fired down. There's an there's a, a, uh, issue in its own because then these motor plugs right here would stick down and be in the way or catch the ground or whatever, whatever you have it. So I came up with an idea, but I'll come back to that. Um, while figuring it out, I chopped off. So this one has 
your t traditional whoop style. I think that fits like the beta 450, you know, 2S or 1S, 650 1S batteries inside here. It does not fit 650s. They're just too fat. So originally I was thinking about you know, like heating it up and molding it to it and running the battery here, which puts some of the weight in the back. And that was a great idea. I'm like, oh, this is perfect. I'm going to do this. And then my dumbass forgot that, yeah, you got to put a battery on it still. So I ended up cutting it off, just leaving the lower section, smoothing it out. And then I actually attached the VTX right there on the top where it's completely easy access to read, to hit the button to change on the go. And it opens up this area here for the VTX. And it's also slightly, it is protected from head-on collisions from there so it'll hit the camera before it hits here I left this out just for extra strength and then to get this shape and you can do this with any antenna is you put your heat shrink or get it on there and then you heat it up till it's pliable and then you hold it in the position you want it for about 30 seconds and then it kind of locks it into this bend if you want to change it at any time you just heat it back up and then you move it to where you want nice cool little thing I didn't change where I put the um, receiver. It was literally hot glued on the flight controller, and I left it there. It just works. It's just there. It's fine. Originally, when I was doing this, I had a... Is that a different mount? Yeah. I had a slightly different mount. It's like a GoPro mount, but smaller. That's the only way I can describe it. I had somebody a long time ago print me a whole bunch of these with some parts in the beginning. And... Um, I had one that kind of fit over the front, and then it had some extra leftover kind of like flaps on the side that I put holes in, and then I made a mount that had the little arms, so it was all one thing, looked like it was made for it, and it held the Cadex Baby Retail 2. Phenomenal, but in the testing and the flying, so in, in the process of this, I would do half a battery in the basement, and half a battery outside and it was a little windy but that kind of really set the bar for what it could handle and obviously I put the camera inside here because I test everything with the weight that I'm gonna have on it I did fly it obviously once or twice without it and yes it flies we get a little bit more flight time and it's a little more more floaty but it's dialed in and tuned to the weight kind of locked in for that cinematic shot where the winds really not gonna push it around and having that weight help but Having all that weight up front, I didn't like how it flew. I tried it with this sideways and up and down. Flew the same. The only difference is obviously your height, your weight goes up a little bit. I still haven't flown this, which is only to see if it'll be in the shot to, to turn that sideways to see if my camera has the gyro in it or the um, cat, whatever you call it, the stabilization will pick up <clears throat> that. So that's my only other thing, but. So that was kind of a fail, kind of, definitely was, I'm not happy. So I went back to the traditional way that I've done this in the past with others. It's just fucking glue it, just glue it in place, make sure it's secure. I moved and used a different mount, moved this way back. This setup has your flight, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. No, so you have your flight controller mounts, but then... There's extra ones out farther for canopies for the whoop. So this thing here, you can sort of see, little shiny thing in there, that's a screw. That screw is tapped and threaded down into that extra piece for the canopy. And then a drop of glue in the back side there so this thing is locked in so it can't break off and run away on you. So back to this. So I had this, I forget what quad this came from, but it, I, th I think it was like a toothpick frame that I had cut the arms off. Yeah, because it's the same one I used on Pearl. As the four diamond, excuse me, four diamond screws. I put some spacers and one little isolator on there just to get the distance away from the motor plugs. And then it had the uh, Umagad stuff on it. So that creates the distance I need to protect everything. The only thing I'd have to do is take these four screws off if I wanted to get to that. But it's a rarity. It's already tuned. I think the only thing I want to do is just move some OSD stuff around in there. But that's nice. It takes 10 seconds. 
And what this also does, besides holding a battery, is lift it off the ground just a little bit more. So, so it'll hold it like that. It gives me the option to run the candy bar style fatter 650s I have versus the other little dinky ones, which I don't have handy to show you. The prop choice is the ones off the Sin 8. I don't remember what, who makes them. They're not upside down. Gemfan, I think. Do I have? Do I have? Do I have? I actually cleaned up after making. You should see the mess inside here. This place was a bomb. I have to, no, I'll have to make stuff on them. But whatever these are, I think they're getting, I'm pretty sure they're getting pans. They're ducted two inch props. Let's see if I can find them in some other colors. Only got a couple left. But I tried those over a couple other props yesterday also for noise and for efficiency. These are the quietest. They're, they're quieter, they're even quieter after taking them out of the traditional Sin 8 style frame, which is more of a ducted frame. Once you take things out of there, they definitely quiet up. And I'm happy with it. I'm getting, it was only basement because it started to rain yesterday after this was official. So I got about five minutes, five minutes, 50 seconds with that in there. That, so that's no wind and that can shrink so I'm, I'm gonna call it like a five minute flight time with this and maybe a better battery I want to try the China Line 2S batteries that have a little more oomph to them what else oh so with these props I also tried um, Gemfan three blade two and a half and cut them and I cut them great but the problem is where you cut them the the part in the prop where it's higher was very close so obviously these are upside down it's gonna be hard to see these little struts that hold it here that high point was actually hitting here so i ended up using some isolators some 3d printed isolators they had off something i've had for years pushed the motor down and that allowed it to work i didn't end up going with them because i just i didn't if there was any vibration couldn't cut them perfect. I'll try to find that prop in a two inch prop, but I just wanted to go and get this done. So I ended up going back to these. That's why I'm with these and I'm happy. I don't know how much difference it'll be with a tri prop versus the four, <coughs> excuse me, but I am very, very pleased with how this came out. Other than the HD camera on here, the profile is phenomenal. Super dinky, clean. The only thing that you can see for wires and I didn't have any more black wire heat shrink was I had to extend the wires just a little bit. So that was the length of my project. And then you can see these wires here because there's nowhere to really hide them and tuck them. I had to extend them also. But it flies really cool. I'm gonna do a official maiden. We're going to the range this morning, like I said, and uh, I'm gonna get some footage. I'm digging it. It's like twins now. It's like you got heaven and hell. You know, you got the, the demon slayer. And you got the opposite. One's a pusher, one's not. That's funny. They're, they're complete opposites in many ways. It's funny. One's got an HD, one doesn't. <laughs> but, yeah, that's where I'm at right now. So I'm going to finish packing up the few things that I need. Any questions? Oh, and obviously... Because it's a pusher, you have to change it in beta flight. Um, sort of like many other, this, this has plug in motors. So that means two of the motors are spinning one direction, two are the other. So what you have to do for this, which makes it a lot easier. So if it's upright, and you got motor one, two, three, four, they're spinning in their orientation. And when you flip over, it's completely backwards, but there's a trick. So you don't have to go in and change anything in beta flight other than just the motor direction. Switch these from one side to the other. So make motor three, motor one, because it's already spinning in that direction. Because again, when you reverse it in beta flight afterwards, instead of having to repin or going to BL heli, which I don't do, it's already spinning the opposite way. So you do that go into beta flight you go in the motors tab with the props off after you've done all this 
and confirm each motor is spinning in the direction that it's telling you in the Betaflight tab. Once you got that, you put your props on the orientation it's telling you. And when I do push her, see how the prop is obviously upright. I take that prop and leave it upright and then push into the top of the post. Some props are not meant to flip upside down like a 3D prop. These are meant to be and use like the, um, the plane of the prop, the way that it's oriented and orientated here. So I keep the orientation here by going through the top hole on the prop. You can try it the other way just for your own example and you'll see the same thing that you get less thrust, it's louder, it's just not efficient. And then once you convert back to this way, everything's happy and awesome again. One thing that's not on here, which I put on every single quad is an LED. I had LEDs wired to the old Pearl and they were running up the back of the antenna. It was the only way I could find to get them on there. And I just didn't want to add more wires to this. I wanted to do something around the back. Um, I just, you know what, I'm like, I'm, didn't feel like doing it. Didn't feel like doing it. I made down the road. I always tend to put one on the back so it helps somebody that's spotting for me see it. So we'll see. Um, I never bothered to look on the flight controller where the LED pad is because I got a couple of programmables that would fit back here. That would be cool. So we'll see. I also thought about doing something on the top or on the back of these struts here. That might be cool. Something different. But that's added wire and time that I don't want to put into it. Just want to fly it. So thank you for tuning in. Again, happy Father's Day. I hope everybody has a great day. Share your builds. Share what you're building and working on. Love to see what you guys are working with and how I could help in any way, creativity, or the challenges that you're overcoming, let me know. Peace out.